hello everyone today uh, in this lecture we will try to understand what is pollen symmetry first of all we would like to understand what is symmetry symmetry can be defined uh, in everyday language as absence of harmonious and beautiful proportion and balance of the parts of body or whole to one another with regard to size structure and form corresponding to a dividing line or median plane any object may have symmetry or do not in plants plants are either symmetric or asymmetric if there is symmetry it may be either radial or bilateral symmetry regarding to pollen grain they are either may be uh, symmetric or asymmetric the pollen grains which are symmetric they are either radially symmetric or bilateral symmetric so the pollen grains have either radial symmetry or bilateral symmetry if they are symmetric pollen grain uh, pollen grains may have uh, symmetry or may not have symmetry uh, radial symmetry uh, you can see in this diagram this one that uh, showing like a sun uh, this is uh, showing radial symmetry and draw a line from uh, this plane draw a line from this plane draw a line from this plane so it have uh, many uh, planes of uh, division and uh, in bilateral symmetry you can see uh, here is a diagram of a butterfly and you can draw a line from only one plane that divides it e into the two equal parts if you draw a line from here to here it divides butterfly in two equal parts that are symmetric to each other that are like to each other so symmetry is responsible for the beauty of the nature or beauty of the objects uh, what is radial symmetric pollen grains radial symmetric pollen grains have more than two planes of symmetry that is one horizontal or two or more vertical as we have seen uh, in earlier case in bilateral symmetric pollen grain they have only one principal plane of symmetry the asymmetric pollen grains have no definite symmetry and on the basis of this they are divided into two groups that is fixed form uh, the pollen grains which shape is fixed and non fixed form uh, the shape of pollen grain is not fixed in this diagram you can see here that uh, diagram a and b and they show uh, radial symmetry and c and d they are showing uh, bilateral symmetry in pollen grain if you draw a line passing through here it uh, divides uh, pollen grain into two equal half and the radial symmetry have uh, two or more uh, plane of division that's a radial symmetry now the next uh, important character of the pollen grain is shape the shape of the pollen grain in different plant uh, is different that is variable in uh, different plant species and even it is variable within species means uh, in within individual plant it may vary the pollen shape is important factor in plant identification so it is used in taxonomy to identify and to classify uh, the uh, 
genera uh, to different uh, taxa label. The morphology of pollen grain is measured by the ratio of length of the polar axis to equatorial diameter. So uh, this shape is defined by ratio of uh, this uh, length of the polar axis and equatorial axis. In earlier lecture I have defined that what is polar axis that is distance between proximal pole and distal pole and uh, the diameter of this equatorial uh, plane or uh, equator. Then <clears throat> according to Altman 1952 pollen shapes has been described as follow uh, according to the ratio of polar axis and equatorial axis the shapes has been defined as per prolate uh, here the ratio is greater than 2 prolate ratio uh, ranges from 2 to 1.33 Subprolate 1.33 to 1.14, prolate spheroidal 1.14 to 1, spheroidal uh, the ratio is 1, oblate spheroidal ratio ranges from 1 to 0.88, suboblate that is 0.88 to 0.75, oblate 0.75 to 50, and per oblate that is less than 50. So uh, the ratio of the polar axis and equatorial axis defines the shape of uh, this pollen grain. In this diagram you can see uh, different uh, shapes of uh, this uh, pollen grain. The first one is per oblate. Here uh, the uh, uh, PE that is a uh, ratio of the polar axis and equatorial axis is less than 0.5 then oblate the B1 C1 the sub oblate D1 this is oblate and this is spherical shape then this is uh, D1 oblate the uh, spheroidal and E1 this is again spheroidal looks somewhat this is elongated one then f1 prolate g1 the subprolate prolate and perprolate so these are the differences here uh, the pe is greater than 2 that is p uh, the ratio between p and e is greater than 2 in case of I that is per prolate. Now another characteristic of the pollen grain that is size. Size of the pollen grain of various species exhibit tremendous size range ranging from 2 to 5 micrometer in myositis member of family Boragenaceae up to more than 300 to 350 micrometer as found in family Cucurbitaceae, Nyctagenaceae, Amolbudaceae, Anonaceae, and many other families. In Symbopetalum odoratisermum, the pollen grain size is 350 micrometer long. Among the non fixiforms, the pollen grains are thread like found in aquatic angiosperm Zostera. They are 200 micrometer to 2 millimeter or 2 millimeter long. So the size is so variable. Uh, that ranges from 2.2 to 5 micrometer to 350 micrometer long. And in case of uh, aquatic angiosperm, that is Jostera, it ranges up to 2000 micrometer or 2 millimeter long. And uh, this is non fixiform pollen grain, that is, uh, there is no fixed symmetry. So, according to size range, pollen uh, grains have been uh, categorized in these uh, following forms that is very small pollens that is myosotis and uh, uh, that ranges from 10 
below the size range uh, from below 10 micrometer the small pollens that is found in salix 10 to 25 micrometer medium pollens 25 to 50 micrometer large pollen 50 to 100 micrometer very large pollen 100 to 200 micrometer and giant pollen grains uh, that are the size is uh, above 200 micrometer now come to the uh, another very interesting and important uh, uh, characteristic of the pollen grain that is pollen aperture what are the aperture apertures are thin area in pollen wall which are thinner than remainder of uh, sporoderm and differs in ornamentation and are directly or indirectly associated with germination of pollen grain and through which pollen tube usually come out uh, in uh, next lecture or maybe after that we will discuss uh, structure of the pollen wall uh, the pollen wall is basically made up of two uh, broad uh, or two wall uh, one is uh, inner one is called as intine and the outer one is called as exine Exine is uh, ornamented part uh, it has different patterns of deposition of uh, this uh, wall that forms different beautiful patterns that is called as ornamentation so uh, apertures are actually thin area where this exine part is lacking and uh, it is associated with germination because pollen tube comes out from this these apertures and uh, pollen germinates through these apertures and the content of the pollen grain comes out through the pollen tube the <coughs> apertures are uh, of two broad uh, shape uh, we can categorize the shape of the apertures in two broad categories that is uh, one is a long aperture called as colpi, while a smaller one circular in outline are called as pores. So, uh, the apertures are usually of two type. The long aperture slit like that is called as colpi or colpus, while a smaller one circular in outline are called as pores. So uh, these apertures may be uh, simple. Uh, simple apertures are called as called by your pore, while there are uh, also compound apertures which have characters of both called by and pore, with central region called oral and outer region is called as colpal, forming colporate means colporate means uh, there is a uh, pore in the central region and colpus in the outer region which forms a colporate type of compound colpi while poral in pororate means there is pore within a pore one large pore and another one is smaller pore so that is called as pororate now uh, the simple apertures the different type of simple apertures uh, they are called as simple if they are present on only one wall layer. These are simple opening or thin areas on exine such as neat, porous, porous, sulcus, sulcus, colpus, extra. So, what is uh, what are these? And we can uh, discuss uh, in some more detail. Lead, lead are actually. Uh, the slit like areas situated at the proximal end of the spore and are characteristic of the pteridophytes. They are either monolith like in xylotum or trilith with triradiate marks as in case of lycopodium. So uh, the lead may be either monolith or 
trinit with triradiate marks which uh, shows um, the area where uh, the four uh, spores are joined then porous these are simple circular pores present at equatorial position with length breadth ratio lesser than 2 are called as orate pollen example uh, are found in family urticaceae uh, there is a simple pore then different variants of the porate are monoporate monoporate means there is a single pore diporate with two pore triporate with three pore jonoporate jonoporate means the pores are present only on the equator they are present only on the equatorial line then pantoporate apertures present all over the body of the pollen grain without definite pattern then penetrate penetrate means pollen grains characterized by large window like spaces lacking a pectum so uh, this is somewhat uh, different uh, window like apertures are present and that lacks tectum layer of the wall then second one is colpus type colpus means this is a long furrow like aperture with length breadth ratio greater than two means they are much more uh, in length uh, than its breed the term is applicable to meridional as well as for other locations example is family lamiaceae different variants of colpid pollen are monocolpid means there is a single colpus dicolpid uh, two colpus are present tricolpid three jonocolpid means uh, colpus is present only in equatorial region pentocolpid uh, colpus is present all over the uh, body of the pollen grain heterocolpid with both simple and compound colpi are present if simple and uh, compound colpi both are present then it is called as heterocolpid then there is alcus these are simple circular aperture in which length breadth ratio is lesser than two restricted to less than the half of the distal surface called as ulcerate pollen grain this type of pollen grains are found in poesy uh, i will show it in uh, the diagram how they looks like then there is another uh, type of this uh, aperture that is called as sulcus these are simple distal elongated boat shaped aperture usually with the tapering end and length breadth ratio is greater than 2 and called as sulcate pollen grain such type of uh, pollen grains are found in family ericaceae then there is pericolpus pericolpus means these are the global simple long furrow like apertures with length breadth ratios greater than 2 such pollen grains are called as pantocolpate or pericolpate and it is found in family for to look at you can uh, see in this diagram uh, the first one it is showing monolith this is the monolith one here you can see the monolith this is trilith then the d1 d1 is a porous there is a single pore uh, this E1 is periporous means uh, pores are present over all over the body. F and G are alcus. This and this one alcus. Uh, as we have seen that alcus uh, found in the pollen grains and this H1 is sulcus. H and I are the sulcus. J and K are sulculus, L is colpus, 
then this is trichotomo sulcate and this O is synculpate. O and P, this shows the synculpate condition, means colpus. Uh, there are uh, colpus aperture that uh, reaches up to the poles and pointed in joints with each other. This is thin colpus condition. This P is a parasynculpate. Then Q and R, these are the spiral aperture. They show spiral C. Then S is call porous and T is pororate. Here uh, there is a two colpus. You can see a two colpus. Here is colpus and pore. This is colpus long one and there is a pore. Then T shows the pororate, means pore within pore. U is sin orate here, V multi orate, the W one is uh, colpo poro rate, then this X and Y are heterocolpate. Z and a A are porocolpate and A B is colporoidate. So uh, the trichotomo sulcate, these are the simple distal trifurcated aperture with the branches are more than twice as long as broad. So branches are much more uh, uh, this. Uh, the aperture of uh, branches are more than twice as long as broad. Some members of Arikasi show such type of uh, this aperture. Then parasynculpate, these type of pollen grain, colpi at a polar region are bifurcated and adjacent branches meet with each other, leaving an isolated apocolpial field of regular shape. Uh, this type of pollen grains are found in family Mericaceae. Then brevicolpate pollen grains having more or less short corp pi, that is pollen grains with a polar axis that is shorter than their equatorial diameter. Then pseudo aperture, these are the actually thinning of the exine not associated with the thickening of the entine. So they are not considered as true aperture as found in family uh, uh, special type aperture that is a spiral aperture a spiral bands are found over the surface of the pollen grain uh, this is found in family acanthaceae then syncolpate syncolpate pollen grains have two or more simple compound called pi ends of which join at the pole as earlier i have shown that oh, what are the syncolpate then parasynculpate, like a synculpate, all, all colpi are fused at to one or both pole, but a small island of exine is left, uh, as found in family uh, Meritaceae. And uh, then next type of special aperture is apocolpium. In apocolpium pollen grains, there is a region at the pole of a jonocolpate pollen grain which is delimited by lines connecting the apices of the colpi. Uh, then there is another category, uh, mesocolpium. In such pollen grain, uh, surface is delimited by the line so between the apices of nearby colpi of the margin of adjacent. Uh, you can see it in this diagram. This is a spiral aperture. This is a spiral aperture. You can see here 
this is a spiral then b1 is parasynchalpate parasynchalpate there uh, there is an island left at the uh, poles this type of island due to joining of this uh, colpus ending of the colpus then apocolpium uh, this type of structure you can see uh, then there is a mesocolpium this type of uh, apertures are seen then hermomogathy this is a special characteristic uh, of the pollen grain hermomogathy was defined by R. P. Woodhouse in 1935, uh, which is the characteristic folding of pollen grain to accommodate the decrease in cellular volume due to water loss. It is mechanism related to accommodation of volume change by valence in water relation during pollination. Blackmore and Banna 1986 considered it essential for survival of pollen grain during pollination. Different harmomagathic mechanisms are as followed. So what is harmomagathy? Well, harmomagathy is actually uh, this is change in volume uh, of the pollen grain uh, due to a loss of water. As we know uh, when uh, the pollen grains are formed uh, they are uh, filled with water or uh, their cytoplasm or protoplasm have lot of water but as they are exposed to environmental condition a lot of water is lost so that uh, they become light uh, so that they can be transported easily and when other things uh, happen due to this uh, lot of uh, loss of water and when these uh, pollen grains reach on the stigma, they again absorb water uh, and uh, become turgid. Uh, this during this process uh, from release from the uh, this anther uh, and uh, up to the reach of the stigma, uh, there is a change in volume due to loss of water, and this change in volume is accommodated by this process that is called as harmomogathy. The different uh, harmomogathic mechanisms are invagination of the aperture membrane in colpate and colporate grains. So there is a uh, invagination. Invagination means uh, entering of this wall uh, or aperture membrane uh, inside uh, in case of colpate and colporate grains. Invagination in synorate endo aperture comparable to equatorial folding. There is equatorial folding as well as invagination uh, of the wall uh, uh, in case of endo aperture uh, and synorate uh, apertures. Invagination of the polar region, which becomes prominent by thinning of exine at the polar region. So, uh, this also happens that the uh, polar region invaginates inside due to thinning of exine at the polar region. Then, another condition is invagination of the aperture membrane of the porate grains. In case of Porate grains, uh, sometimes this uh, membrane of the aperture invaginate um, so that this change in volume is made possible. Uh, this was all about some of the uh, morphological character of the uh, pollen grain. This is suggested reading for yourself. This is a book written by me, Phenology and Biostatistics. So you can uh, this book covers uh, both 
pandemology and biostatistical part uh, you can read it in next uh, lecture uh, we will discuss some other part of the uh, pandemology